I've been expecting you. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the annual Alex Peters Halloween special. Do you like what I've done with the plates? I have a lovely skeleton and its child. We have the bunting, we have candles, we have eyeballs, we have cobwebs. I think it looks pretty good. Today I'm going to be reviewing horror movies. Now, to give you some context, I am a very anxious person. So horror movies haven't really been my go-to in the past. In my late teen years and like adult years now, I have seen a couple of horror movies and I didn't hate them. And I actually kind of liked them, which is kind of counterintuitive. Here's, here's my theory. Because with a horror movie, you're expecting it to be scary and or stressful. And I don't know, I go into it with a different mindset. Like regular everyday life things stress me out more than like spooky, scary things. In the horror genre, I haven't really seen many movies at all. So during the months of September and October, I set out to only watch horror films and I got through 13 of them. And I'm gonna review them for you today. The thing that used to freak me out the most about horror movies was the jump scares. Like I couldn't even look in any kind of suspenseful moment because I was like, oh my God, oh my God, like I can't, I couldn't deal with the anticipation and then the scary part. Um, but now I've like exposed myself to it. Um, I'm kind of just like, yeah, when's it gonna happen? Pretty obvious warning, um, there will be spoilers. First movie is Parasite. Greed and class discrimination threaten the newly formed symbiotic relationship between the wealthy Park family and the destitute Kim Quan. I know this is not really a horror movie, it's more of a thriller, but I wanted to include it because it has won a lot of awards. And so here are my thoughts. There was obviously a lot of hype surrounding it. Uh, I'd heard lots of good things. So I was keen, I was very keen. And I was very disappointed. It was pretty boring for the first solid hour. The end part was where it got interesting. Yeah, it got interesting when, you know, we found out that there were people like under the house and like that guy who'd been locked up under there. And I have a very like vivid memory of him like hitting his head on those buttons to do the Morse code. That was, yeah, that was a lot. I think maybe it just wasn't my cup of tea. I'm so sorry about that. Overall, it was okay, but like disappointed. Maybe if I didn't have expectations, it would have been better, but due to the hype, it did not live up to my expectations. Next, A Quiet Place. A family struggles for survival in a world where most humans have been killed by blind but noise sensitive creatures. They are forced to communicate in sign language to keep the creatures at bay. I feel like that's a bad summary but okay oh my god it is the most stressful movie i've ever seen in my life i think i almost had a cardiac arrest like at least five times in that movie i was stressed from the very moment at the start when that little boy took the batteries i was like okay i'm done we're done rest in peace to me like i couldn't handle it. The quietness of the movie was absolutely the number one thing that made it so stressful because that any type of noise, anything that happened was such a kind of, it was quite startling and scary, especially in the start. So when the little boy was eaten, killed, taken, that was like, Whoa. the fact that Emily Blunt was pregnant, pregnant, in a land where you have to be silent. I know they're in an abandoned society where they don't have a pharmacy and stuff, but like guys could have tried harder. That's all I'm saying. What a mistake. Also, what I loved about this movie was that the plot was actually good. The characters were actually good. When the dad sacrificed himself to save his children, I cried. I cried so much. That was the most beautiful moment in all of these films. Overall, that movie was so, so stressful the whole way through up until the very last minute. However, I did thoroughly enjoy it. Like it made me feel things. So I loved it. The next one is like a very classic movie, The Shining. Jack and his family move into an isolated hotel with a violent past. 
Living in isolation, Jack begins to lose his sanity, which affects his family members. I know it's a classic. I know it's old. I know it's a product of its time, but it's like so basic. Like it wasn't that good. Okay, let me start off with some positives. I loved the cinematography, the big hallways, the big rooms, the colors, really nice. I enjoyed that aspect. That was about it. Here's what I didn't like, the plot. There were a lot of unexplained things in that movie that I feel like they could have delved further into and made the plot like more substantial. The scariest part of the entire film was when the two guys were in the bathroom and they said the n-word. I was like shocked. I know the movie is a product of its time, but like, yikes. Next film um, is actually the sequel to The Shining. So it's called Dr. Sleep. Struggling with alcoholism, Dan Torrance remains traumatized by the sinister events that occurred at the Overlook Hotel when he was a child. His hope for a peaceful existence soon becomes shattered when he meets Abra, a teen who shares his extrasensory gift of the shine. Together, they form an unlikely alliance to battle the true knot, a cult whose members try to feed off the shine of innocence to become immortal. I really enjoyed this movie. In contrast to the first movie, it had actually quite a good plot. It really built on the concepts that were established in the first movie, and um, it made a lot of sense of the things that happened in the last movie as well. They really tied in the two films. They're like very different and like pro very different in terms of like when they were made. Dare I say it was more interesting than the original movie. Next is Ratchet. And now I know this is not a film. I am sorry. I just, it's a horror series or like, you know, hor horror thriller series. And I just like had to include it because it was so good. A young nurse at a mental institution becomes jaded and bitter before turning into a full-fledged monster to her patients. I don't think so. I disagree with that. Ryan Murphy is like the creator of this and also was involved in American Horror Story and Hollywood and that is actually I would describe Ratchet as a kind of if you took the aesthetic of Hollywood and the themes of American Horror Story and then you put them together, that is Ratchet to me. And it's very reminiscent of American Horror Story because Sarah Paulson is the main character. Ratchet was so aesthetically pleasing, so many good colours and costumes and all of that was really great. Um, there were definitely like gruesome moments. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was scary per se, but it definitely had unsettling moments. There were a lot of things that happened, a lot of, I want to say like double crossing of people's trust, murder, betrayal. I really would highly rate it. I thought it was great. Next film that I have is Silence of the Lambs. Clarice Starling, an FBI agent, seeks help from Hannibal Lecter, a psychopathic serial killer and former psychiatrist, in order to apprehend another serial killer who has been claiming female victims. It was sufficiently creepy. It sufficiently creeped me out. I'm scared of men and I'm scared of moths. So. Like, it definitely left me feeling a bit icky, a bit unsettled, um, but like, it was good. The face on the face situation was, you know, that was a memorable moment for sure. Uh, that was pretty smart. I don't really condone like ripping someone else's face off. However, he did well. Next movie is The Ring. After her niece Katie's horrifying death, Rachel, a young journalist, investigates a mysterious videotape that kills its viewers within a week's time. For the first hour, I was really bored. I know a lot of horror mo movies start off slow in the first hour to build suspense, but like it wasn't really doing much for me. I feel like it could have gone faster at the beginning. I have a note here that says I wanted her to eat the fly. Why was that happening? I, I just, I thought she was going to eat the fly and then she didn't and I was like, oh, okay, so... What are we doing here then? There definitely were some moments that were unsettling. Pulling the string out of her throat, I actually gagged. You know what? I have a bone to pick. With the ending, 
What was that? So I hated the structure of this ending. The movie came to a resolution, then it just got bad again, and then it finished on a really bad note, and I didn't like that. You have just resolved the problem, then the whole problem has re-emerged. Okay, so after that, I was feeling a bit heavy, so I watched Freddy vs. Jason, which is like comedy horror. I really liked it. Freddy, who is losing power, resurrects Jason to terrorize the people of Springwood. But Jason starts intruding on Freddy's territory, and this eventually leads to a standoff between two monsters. Kelly Rowland was an absolute queen in this movie, although, you know, it's like there is lots of killing and stuff. It's pretty lighthearted, I think. The kills were very extravagant and kind of funny because they were very extreme. There is a lot of blood and like body parts when there was that like mouth to mouth scene i was absolutely not next i watched carrie the original on the day of her prom night 17 year old carrie discovers that she possesses telekinetic powers she puts her powers to use when she is humiliated after a prank i have a, a long amount of notes for this and i'm going to be heavily reading these first thing the very start, when she put a bar of soap on her face, I was like, girl, that is not good skincare. What are you doing? It hurt my face. The fact that she had period blood on her hand and then she grabbed someone and like the blood went onto them. I was like, Carrie's mother really scared me and reminds me of like people I know in real life, just saying. That's unfortunate, isn't it? So the actress who played Carrie was 27 at the time and meant to be playing like a 17 year old or an 18 year old. I did love the whole reference to Jesus on the cross when Carrie with her mind sent all the knives into her mum. That was good, that was very good. Just put my eyeball down for a minute. The way the mum was just like dead, but like, still her whole body was upright and just like standing up. I'm like pretty sure you don't stay standing when you're dead. She had the knives that went through her hands in the wall, pinning her to the wall. I thought she was gonna like fall and then it would have ripped through her hands and <sighs> that was stressing me out. And then Carrie did pull her off the wall and like she kept pulling her and her arm was attached to the wall and I was like, oh, stop it. The Conjuring. The Perrin family moves into a farmhouse where they experience paranormal phenomena. They consult demonologists, Ed and Lorraine Warren, to help them get rid of the evil entity haunting them. <sighs> it's another one I'm putting in the category boring for the first hour. I didn't like the characters at all. There were a couple of good moments in the first half of the movie, like the third clap. That was kind of good. I was genuinely scared when the like demon thing popped up on the top of the wardrobe. That got me. That did get me. I liked that. The exorcism was good though. I will give it that. But like that's the last, what, 20, 15 minutes of the movie? And like, why couldn't we make the rest of the movie that good, you know? There were good moments. But overall, I think they could have done better. Next, I watched the evil dead five friends travel to a cabin in the woods where they unknowingly release flesh possessing demons firstly it was hilarious it was so gross but it was also hilarious let's address the strangest part of the movie the tree scene it was a questionable addition to the movie and i'm not sure that it was essential either <laughs> the witchy demon that like just sat in that little trap door and like watched all of these events unfold was hilarious. It was every time they cut back to that demon just sitting in the trapdoor, I was like, <laughs> you're just chilling, you're just chilling there watching everyone die. This is great. The fake body parts. <sighs> I get a bit grossed out by like body parts that look really fake and gross. Like you can tell they're fake. I don't know why, but that makes me feel more ill than like realistic looking things. It was disgusting. I was disgusted by the way that the bare hand coming out of the grave did so much damage to his leg. Like it was bleeding and so wounded just by her hand. Okay, so from the moment onwards in the movie when the blood started pouring out of like the PowerPoints 
and everything everything from there onwards was like unbearable for me to watch um when he stepped i don't know why this bothered me so much but when he stepped in the puddle of blood i gagged pressing in the eyes when he like pressed in the eyes of the possessed person i gagged again <laughs> The fake organs and everything in the body's like decomposing in that it almost looked like claymation. Oh, it was so gross. <laughs> it, looked, it looked like there was stuff that looked like cottage cheese and I was just like no. It was nasty. The next movie we have is Raw. Stringent vegetarian Justine encounters a decadent, merciless and dangerous seductive world during her first week at veterinary school. Desperate to fit in, she strays from her principles and eats raw meat for the first time. The young woman soon experiences terrible and unexpected consequences as her true self begins to emerge. What's really captivating from the start. Before we get into the cannibal aspect, let's just talk about this girl's uni experience. Like, Christ. Sorry if anything looks different. I just had to, like, take an hour break because there was a noise outside. But anyways, so this follows her first couple of weeks or, like, I don't know, however long at uni for the first time. It was so intense and terrible. And that component was, like, unsettling to me more so than the actual cannibalism. <laughs> when she got to the uni, they had all these like initiation rituals that the first years had to go through. They dragged them out of bed in the middle of the night. They trashed their rooms. They threw all their mattresses out the window. They had to go to a party. They then had to initiate them. They had to like eat a rabbit kidney or something. I would hate to be in that position. So now onto the cannibal side of things. Uh, firstly, there was a part where she like started vomiting up heaps of hairballs and ugh, that was gross and so then so the main event her sister's finger gets cut off and her sister is like bleeding out on the floor she's like passed out from the, the blood loss and the protagonist picks up her finger and nibbles on it and then proceeds to eat it. She's become a cannibal because she ate raw meat and for some reason that's like triggered cannibalism within her. And she's sitting in the corner of this room with her sister bleeding out on the floor and she's just eating her finger. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. I was just like, oh my God, this is so awkward. And then the sister wakes up and sees her eating her finger. At the end, the girl finds out that her whole family are cannibals and the dad's kind of just and it ends with the dad kind of just being like yeah we're all like this we all have to figure out a way to deal with it hope you figure it out the end the last film i'd like to talk about is spiral so spiral is a movie that is on a new streaming service for horror movies specifically and like horror related content called Shudder. A same-sex couple move to a small town to enjoy a better quality of life and raise their daughter with strong social values. But when the neighbors throw a very strange party, nothing is as it seems in their picturesque neighborhood. P.S. The neighborhood is not picturesque. It's like a boring old small town. It was quite eerie and a lot of strange things were happening to this family um, that were related to like homophobia. So Malik is like going around going like, to his husband oh you know weird things are happening there is something wrong and his husband's just like no you're being silly there's kind of a lot of things that happen in the middle that uh, i'm not going to talk about you can just watch it and find out i'm just going to jump to like kind of towards the end of the movie malik is taking some sort of drugs but his pills have been like swapped to something else so he is like starting to see things and like it kind of is being for a minute you're like oh maybe he is making this up in his head it's kind of like he's being driven to insanity and then he actually shoots a guy who is like the person who's kind of leading this cult or so it seems then he gets put in jail overnight and then that guy comes back and he's like yeah like you can't kill me once he's in jail the husband finally figures out that things are not good he's trying to get into his daughter's room this is like a pinnacle moment he's trying to get into his daughter's room 
his daughter is not answering the door. He's like, open the door, open the door. And then there are all these hooded figures. He turns around, there's all these hooded figures in his house. And then the door opens. And this is so iconic. It's probably the best part of the whole movie. The daughter is dead. And like her body, her corpse is like, has no organs in it. And the guy who she's been seeing, the boyfriend, who is the son of the guy who is the cult leader. I know this is confusing, but just like put this together in your mind for a minute. He's like eating her body and he's just there like eating her body. It was like a very iconic moment. So overall, I thought it was good. I thought it was a bit of a different concept. Um, yeah, like it wasn't bad. And that's all the movies I watched. Um, I was just gonna, like right now it's like the middle of October and initially I was going to just watch these movies for like six weeks because I started at the start of September and then like finish it there but I'm actually just obsessed with these movies now because I've like conditioned myself to watch them all the time um so if you have any recommendations of horror movies or thrillers or anything that you like pop them in the comments thank you so much for watching to the end if you did watch to the end um please remember to give this a thumbs up comment anything you like below subscribe, hit the bell, do all the things, just like interact with the video if you liked it. Anyways, I've been filming for so long and my face hurts from talking. So I'm gonna go. <laughs> um, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.